Yeah, I got the truck camping accessories all ready to go. Cooler, waders, camping gear, uh, all the good stuff I showed you in one of those videos. As it turns out, bad weather, thunderstorms coming through, nasty cold front. Well, what did I decide to do? I decided to go up north, up north of the wall into Oklahoma and do some trout fishing. So right now, you and I are going to investigate the waters and see how they look. I see a duck flying. Look at that. Look at that sucker go. Off into the distance he goes. Boy, it looks like some flow. Hello, flow? Progressive? You're here. Nice to meet you. Flow and muddy water. That's not what we want to see, uh, quite honestly. Putting them in the box. Little assortments. This water's so muddy. This is not the jam. I was a trout. I went, this is like last time I was here, the second day. It's terrible. Oh my gosh. There's ice. There's ice on my guides. What am I doing here? Okay, okay, okay. Pause it right there. That was me about eight hours ago attempting to make a trout fishing video. I was wanting to go back. I know a lot of you watch the trout fishing video. Uh, you like the camping and everything, and I, I'm, I've been all set. It's been on my mind to go back there. But this is also the day after getting back from seeing the brain surgeon. Obviously, you know what I'm about to get into, but for me, getting just back from the doctor, this is an escape for me to just go out and this is my mechanism. Whenever I have issues, I go into the outdoors. I'm like an outdoor hermit and it gets things off my mind. Except this thing, I can't really get off my mind. Loaded up with lures, I'm giving it a dangle, I'm enjoying the river, uh, I'm enjoying just being out there, I'm camping, I'm doing all these things, making delicious coffee, and I'm doing everything I can to try to get uh, what is going on off my mind. But I started getting phone calls and texts about this uh, this issue that I'm having and some other issues that are going on and suddenly I realize like I'm basically just out here trying to not really go through the motions but I'm trying to make a video and I'm not I'm not myself at this moment and I never want to not be myself on video uh, and just go out there just just to just to make videos and put them up you know the reason I make fishing videos and all these videos that I do is to, uh, when I get excited about something, I want to share that and I want others to get inspired to go do it or help others. And I, I enjoy it myself. I want to share that experience. Just being at a meetup, a few meetups, meeting people, hands down, hey, I watched one of your videos. I got excited to go out there and do this. It's changed changed my life or I got back into this after not fishing for 20 years and man, I'm so happy right now and hey, I'm using this to cope with this and it just, it helps me out so much. That is, it might be my life's purpose. So I don't know how many of you watch the Lake Life Family Channel, but recently we had a video where I went to the doctor, vlogged the experience and then we found out that Willis is back. He is growing, so if you haven't watched that video, you can go check it out, but uh, I'm here to tell the rest of you, Willis, well, he never really left. It's just, he's like respawned and started growing again. And I think I always knew that that was going to happen and I was gonna have to deal with it. I just wasn't ready to do it this soon. I have to go get my checkups every few months and then, hey, no growth. Okay, we'll deal with it, you know, five, 10 years down the road if something happens, whatever. Uh, but the reality is it's here right now and I have to deal with it right here and now. And what I realized being out there in the outdoors, um, even though I was escaping, it's like, I don't need to be here right now. I need to be back home. I need to be with the family. I need to be with my girls and uh, resolving this issue and kind of talking this out a little bit more because literally I just got back to the doctor and I'm like, okay, got a brain tumor growing. All right, I guess I'm going in the outdoors tomorrow. So as OSG, my wife, Stephanie was 
calling me, texting me, and relaying information about you know insurance and doctor's appointments and all these things. Uh, I just decided I needed to come home and deal with it. The fishing was not good. Uh, I would have been out there all day trying to just catch fish, and I realized it was just, it was just me escaping, really. Uh, it was terrible conditions, 28 degrees, I mean, snow was falling. It's just one of those days where you know, I don't need to be here. It was like God was telling me, you don't need to be here. You need to be dealing with this situation and, uh, and kind of resolving what is going on with the fam. And now I'm here to relay more information, intel to you guys and resolve this so I can go back into the outdoors with a clean conscience of, okay, I have vented, I've talked about it, I've dealt with the situation uh, and, and move on. So for those of you that are just tuning in, this is like one of your first videos watching me or you've been here for a little bit, you've seen some fishing action or some outdoor action, hunting, whatever, and now you're like, whoa, this guy has a tumor, what's going on? I had a tumor back, this was a, a year and a few months ago, I had surgery on a tumor named Willis and it was around five centimeters uh, wide, if I remember correctly, and, and the doctor reminded me of this, you know, five centimeters wide, pretty good size, but then imagine the circumference of that all the way around. I don't know how big a golf ball is, but you know, probably around ping pong or golf ball size. That's actually not a huge tumor. There's, there's a lot of people that have like baseball size tumors. Somehow your body absorbs that, your brain uh, like absorbs it and you don't realize the growth because it's just slow and your body just gets used to it over time. In my case, I found out because it was bumping into some important wires in there, uh, the carotid artery and the optic nerve. The reason I named the tumor Willis was because of the bundle of nerves that it was around. It was, it was called, I think, uh, the bundle of, of Willis, or it had something to do with Willis. Anyway, so there's a lot of important circuits there. It's kind of attached like a tick to my carotid artery, which is the main artery going up and down all the way you know, through your spine into your brain. Um, and it's one of the most important, probably the most important artery in your body. So when pressure starts forming on that carotid artery, you can have stroke. Thank God, uh, I was just having the, uh, the headaches and the, I mean the extreme, I mean you guys, I documented it, but, but a stroke happens when your arteries cut off your brain's not getting enough oxygen and then it starts starving and anyway, that's a real thing, could happen. So thankfully, uh, through all of your support, amazing doctors, uh, great people in the hospital system uh, with all sorts of other issues with insurance and the whole debacle, I was able to have brain surgery, get Willis, not removed, but reduced dramatically. You can't really give an exact measurement. They're really looking at MRIs and then using these all these great digital tools that they have to, to digitally measure. Uh, it's crazy the technology they have, so, but it's just enough to know, oh yeah, it's growing, so problem. So Willis went down to about a quarter in size, which is livable. Definitely, you can live with that size tumor in your brain your whole life, you'd never even know it. Problem is, when it starts bumping into things, growing into things it shouldn't, uh, that's where you really start having issues. So for me, that's the carotid artery. Uh, it's on my left side, behind my eye. And currently, it is about four millimeters away from my uh, optic nerve. Before, it was actually pressing on the optic nerve, that's why I was having just, my eyesight was off. Uh, for about eight months and I didn't really know why. I've always had really great vision. When that pressure came off my optic nerve, my vision uh, came back, you know, it was better. The part that is on the carotid artery, it's never gonna go away. That's why uh, you can't touch it. It's just one of those things. You can't touch it no matter how good you are as a brain surgeon. You go in there and start fiddling around. It's not like they fiddle around. <laughs> they take it very seriously and they're extremely good, especially uh, my doctor, Dr. Kim. However, uh, you just can't touch it, it's too dangerous. So that has to stay and then uh, branching off, it was bumping into my optic nerve. So treatment wise, they want me to go ahead and uh, schedule a treatment. It is called gamma knife radiation. It's amazing technology. 
I believe this is correct. GPS coordinates. I, I remember thinking when I heard this out of the surgeon's mouth, I was like, he's just saying GPS because, you know, I deal with GPS all the time. But GPS coordinates of basically think of your, your head as a earth, a globe, and then it is putting precision coordinates where the tumor is and then attacking it with multiple laser beams of radiation. I shouldn't say laser beams, that sounds bad. Multiple beams of radiation, I think up to like 190 beams of, of light radiation, uh, not light, I mean like light radiation, radioactive, and then going in and then when it hits the spot all together, I mean, I wish I could form like a, like a you know, graphic of this, but then it becomes concentrated when it all hits that center target, then taking effect. But it's not immediate. Honestly, I still have to do my research on radiation treatment, but for anyone out there that's wondering what radiation treatment's used for, it's basically to kill anything. You know, they use it in, in cancer treatments all the time. I don't know how long this gamma knife procedure has been around, but it's used to kill uh, the tumor and, and shrink it basically and prevent it from growing anymore. Radiation in your body, never good. The problem with being a, a young, younger person uh, and, and using radio, <laughs> radio treatment, it goes into your body, kills the cells, kills pretty much everything, uh, but then morphing can happen later, if that makes sense, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you know, when they got in that green sauce, not immediately, over over time. Cancer advances and all that, that's the only thing that scares me about this, is that I don't think there's any long-term research on uh, on this thing. So it's like, yeah, we kill your tumor now, but hey, might get cancer in 20 years and great. Yeah, like, no one really knows, but it is definitely different than other forms of radiation like people with pancreatic cancer take and then like you're personally radioactive. Like you can't be around small children, babies, like probably cats or anything. I just use cat as an example. Uh, I'd probably have a dog. I won't have that issue. But what they recommended is definitely go in within 12 months, get the procedure done. More likely six, you know, just be because if it grows outside of that area where it starts to bump up against the optic nerve, then the radiation affects your optic nerve. Then, you know, you could lose vision and uh, whatever, whatever else happens on your, your eyeball nerve. I mean, pretty important little, little dangler there. So that is basically what I know about the prognosis and the treatment and uh, basically trying to just relay that message to you guys the best I can uh, and hopefully help someone out there. My previous experience with this has definitely helped people. In fact, I know one person for sure that got diagnosed because of the same symptoms and went to the same doctor and had the same treatment and uh, maybe even saved their life. Fishing's awesome. Fishing's, you know, that's, that's how I've made it into the outdoor career that I have, if you wanna call it that. But being able to share information on this platform that could potentially help someone else I believe that is even more important. I feel like I'm a steward of these of these uh, terrible health stories. And what I was feeling today was, I wanna be over it. Like, I, I was already over the tumor, the Willis, I was already over it. Now we're here again, guys. So, it's time to do battle once again. One more thing about the treatment. Well, what's crazy, I mean, oh yeah, you think you're gonna be like in the hospital for a while. No, it's, a, it's just a one, like you're there all day from what I know of. Uh, and then you can go home, outpatient procedure. I have to do my research, but I think the radiation doesn't take effect for quite a long time, like many months, maybe a year. So, my fellow fishing freaks and anyone else here, I started today's video thinking um, I'm gonna go catch some trout, uh, I'm gonna fill up the cooler, and I'm gonna go home. My mom really wanted some trout, family wanted some trout, and I'm gonna do this outdoor video. I got out there. Conditions were terrible, uh, fishing sucked, um, home life was calling, and I believe that is the most important thing, is taking care of a family, family first. I gotta tell you, without, without her, uh, I would be lost, especially in these situations. Sort of shut things off, and that, that, that's my problem that I'm getting back to today. I just went in the outdoors, and I was struggling dealing with having to do this all over again. 
the lady upstairs taking care of baby Emmy right now, uh, she also takes care of me quite a bit. Um, more than you guys see on camera and not that I'm, <laughs> Not that I'm like handicapped. She might think otherwise sometimes. But just things around the household, uh, th other things with business, taking care of the family. She's there. She's there. She's the rock at home. So now we have gone to battle stations to deal with the issue. Stephanie, again, she is uh, scheduling out appointments, surgeries, uh, and talking to different insurances. Currently, we don't have coverage on that we should we're trying to get an exemption but i will keep you guys abreast of that i think i've updated you on everything i possibly can about willis officially back you know 2.0 it's like a shriveled little like a, like a voldemort you know like in harry potter when he comes back for like one of the first ones he's, he's like ah you know it's like trying to come back but he's he's like struggling he's like doing everything he can but you know, <laughs> we all know what happens in the end. <laughs> One more thing on a personal note that I'll add, meeting some of you at, at these meetups, uh, and then you say like, man, I watched your story with the brain tumor thing, like how'd you keep a good attitude through that? Um, well, faith, um, uh, just positivity, family, like just, just putting a smile on and just going for it. Honestly, like you can really choose to deal with it in two different ways. You can get down, you can get depressed, and then it causes even even more issues. You can like kind of feel sorry for yourself, or you can just attack it, be positive. Uh, I think that's the better approach, personally. <sighs> Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for all your support, guys. I will keep you updated as as we learn more. But here we are again, 2019 outdoor season, dealing with Willis. Uh, hopefully he will be shriveled, gone, dead over the summer and never to be found again. And that is all I have for you today. What a doozy. But I do hope wherever you are, you're having a blessed day in the outdoors or maybe it's freezing cold, you're inside, spending some time with the family. Good, you should. Cherish it, most important thing in life, your family. I love you guys and I will see you on the next one.